Welcome back to the Cave of Wonders Dreamwalkers. I am your Sith Lord Callus for Lord Callus TV. And this is another Callus review. And today I want to talk about The Mandalorian Season 2. I think it's called Chapter 9 The Marshal. So let's get into it. Now, like season one, this was a great first episode. The tone was set with Din Djarin and the child making their way through the town. We had action, we had member berries, we had lore connections, and even retcons to some extent. And just based off of this first episode, I can see why they didn't show too much in that first trailer and in that second short special look trailer. I'm glad they kept everything bottled up. It felt good to see some of the speculation and the theories that fans came up with come to life in this first episode. The opening scene was so satisfying even though we saw much of it in the trailer. This is the Mando I want to see for the duration of this season. Full Beskar armor with his sigil in place, kicking ass with the child at his side. It felt good, and it felt purposeful. Right away we have an inciting incident, leading us into what this season will involve. Mando seeking other Mandos to help him find the Jedi and return the child. I'm here on business. I need your help. I've been quested to bring this one back to its kind. Now as the episode moves on, it is full of member berries as Din Djarin makes his way back to Tatooine. We got to see that crazy ass dock worker Pelimato again from season one. We see the R5 astromech droid from A New Hope. Of course the repair droids from the Phantom Menace are present working on the Mando ship and I thought that that was pretty cool to see him getting over his hangups with droids from season one. If you'll recall, he doesn't like droids because, of course, the Separatist droid army attacked his home when he was young and killed his parents. So it doesn't look like they'll be spending too much time with this plot element for this season, and I'm, I'm happy about that. But as the story continues, and believe me, they waste no time getting to the meat of it all. The pacing is great throughout the episode. I enjoyed seeing the Weequay bartender. That's an alien race we see mostly in games and comics, not too much on the big screen, so I thought that was a nice touch. And then we meet none other than Cobb Vanth himself, played by Timothy Oliphant. Now this is a character that many of us speculated would be in this season, doing precisely what he is doing, wearing Boba Fett's armor. Now if you don't know, Cobb Vanth is a character that was introduced to us in the Aftermath series. He was a self-proclaimed sheriff looking to bring law and order to Tatooine after the destruction of the second Death Star. Now oddly, they changed the way he came about Fett's armor from the book in this episode. Maybe they felt like it was uh, too violent, I don't know. But in the novel, Cobb actually forcefully took that armor from one of the mining reps that are now trying to establish themselves as syndicates on Tatooine with the death of Jabba and the vacuum of power that that is causing in the underworld. He helps the man speak with the Jawas to get into a vault, then he shoots the man when that man finds Fett's armor in a box and won't give it up. He doesn't kill him, but he takes the armor and tells that dude to warn the syndicates that a new sheriff is in town. So they kind of dumbed it down a bit for this episode 
and they just made Vanth find it himself. I'm, I'm curious why they did that, but nevertheless, I'm still happy that they are trying to maintain continuity. However, my only complaint is how awkward that armor looked on Tim. I mean, when I read the novel, that's just not how I pictured Cobb's body type. I saw it looking more filled out. The only way I can explain it is that it was awkward. It, he was maybe too thin for it, and it just looked weird to me. Not to take anything away from Oliphant's portrayal of Cobb, I thought he did well, but it was just jarring to see him in that armor so thin. I do like the story of Mas Pelgo, and I hope we see more of it in the future. I liked the modified racing pod engine that Cobb turned into a speeder. I thought that was freaking dope. The sand people looked good, but the crate dragon was also a little underwhelming for me. I guess that's because Star Wars Galaxy's portrayal of the crate dragon is the first that I've ever seen of a crate dragon on the screen, alive. So that's how I will always picture the crates. Not that the sandworm uh, way was that bad, but it just wasn't what I thought it was going to be. I did like seeing the Tusken Raiders pull out the Crate Dragon Pearl at the end, though I thought that was a dope connection to Star Wars Galaxies and the EU. The Pearl was used uh, for lightsaber tuning and crystal construction, so it will be interesting to see why they called it out here. If they are planning to reintroduce it as such, or if there's maybe another purpose for it. And then, of course, the caveat at the end was Tim Wera Morrison as Boba Fett. All in all, bravo for this first episode. It was written by Favreau, and I think he did a great job. I wonder if we'll see Cobb again, or if he was just an instrument for the introduction to Boba Fett. Will be interesting to see where they go from here, but I'm excited. You guys let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you're new here to the channel, hit that like button and that subscribe button. It really helps me out. I'm trying to get to about 2,000 subscribers before 2021. We now have memberships also available on the channel. So if you'd like to help support me bring great Star Wars videos to YouTube, please consider joining. Shout out to Rhodes Rants, John Matrix, Callisto, and Biggles. For joining the Sith Army. Listen, I do what I love. I hope you love what I do. This has been a Callous Review. Until next time.